Hi. Welcome to the program, Artist and Critic. I'm Don Gray. And uh, if you'll pardon me for <clears throat> starting out with a little bit of a chuckle, my guest today is the very excellent painter, Philip Sherrod. Uh, and I'm not chuckling. I am chuckling at Phil, but uh, not because of his work. <laughs> He's rather informal, as you can see over here. Uh, Phil is really, in my opinion, one of the outstanding painters of our time. And, uh, and I'm going to ask him if he is one of the outstanding painters of our time. Um, why aren't you more of a household word, Phil? <clears throat> I don't know, Don. I don't know. I mean, you know. Um... We're going to be looking at your work a little bit later in the program, but just to describe it in words, it's, it's rich, rich and lush in color, very sensuous in the handling of the paint. You're uh, a realist in the sense that you're attached to the real world. You're trying to make art from it, from figures, from nudes, from still lives, from the city. You're one of the few painters today who goes out on the street, sets up your easel on uh, 42nd Street in Times Square. When most people are afraid to walk by there, you are actually out there painting there. Um, why, why, do you, why do you paint in Times Square? <clears throat> well, that's, um, I think, because of the color the um, the movement. Uh, back to your first question, though, I, I have an answer. Um, um, this society today doesn't seem to be oriented towards um, possibly the artist as it does the participatory gimmickist. The thing that um, I, I think there are few artists or people that are really involved with seeing or looking or concerned with. Um, arranging a part of life on the canvas and I and I think that art pertains more to life or the experience of life um, as to what I'm as to why I'm not uh, seen or known or whatever uh, to a degree I, I think it has to do with the the mass media the manipulation uh, political issues and so forth I think it has to do very little with painting I think painting will ultimately come out on its own state of existence quality statement will ultimately come out and become uh, valid as a scene. Well, you're saying that we're sort of a non-visual society. We have uh, <clears throat> really, I think, been through a period in the last, uh, well, who knows, since World War II and in the 70s, certainly, a, uh, a non-visual, sort of rather cold, impersonal, cerebral, uh, supposedly intellectual kind of art and abstraction where no, as far as a person could tell by looking at that kind of work, there, there, there is no world around us. Um, so you're trying to find some of that life and some of the vitality out there and express it in your work, is that it? Well, I'm trying to relate. I think that maybe um, the artist has two problems. One is the inside or the subconscious versus the outside. And I think uh, too many people rely on verbiage, literal content, um, I think few look outside and actually try to relate to what we go through with as human beings. I think that uh, I think it's a lopsided. I think that the state of art today is, or it has been within the last 50 years, uh, a state of the introverting individual, no longer confronting the outside or what goes on in the world, within the state of vision. I think it's gone to words. I think it's gone to, to an intellectual concept of directions. And off of that direction, you're supposed to have directions within the direction. I think it's gone totally out of art into states of um, a really per participatory type of control or, or the political. If you're involved, if you follow, if you know the next thing coming in. I, I think that uh, I'm more interested in relating to what I feel what I see out of, or, or what I see, and then to what I feel, and I think it takes a long time to develop a, a statement that way. I think that uh, there's so many quick ways to become known, mm. and, and I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. Mm. Well, it's uh, sort of the age of the fad and the gimmick. It has been in, in many respects. Well, it's always been this way, but we're bombarded more by mass <laughs> media. Why am I in Times Square? Because I like it there. Movement, color. Maybe I'm trying to give order to chaos within the state of my form as as a but there's real life out there right oh sure i mean that's well, the yeah, reason sure, for being sure, out there sure. it's yeah. real it's it's what everybody faces the businessman it's what where everybody uh, exists uh, they become part of their environment and i'm trying i guess to absorb 
or relate to what really is the reality outside of what my... I hate stylization. I hate uh, little intellectual concepts which develop little styles and they stay there. I would like to try to get out in the guts of life and absorb, and I think the more you can take into, the greater the statement within subtleties develops in a lifetime uh, okay. of painting. Well said. Phil is a remarkable painter, and we're going to be looking at some of Phil's work uh, just momentarily. I would like to give a little bit of your background. You have a double degree from Oklahoma State University, right, in uh, zoology and uh, painting. In 1959, you were in wildlife management, of all things, which is... Uh, I'm still in wildlife. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly are when you go prowling 42nd Street, right? And uh, <clears throat> you've had a Federation of Arts and Letters scholarship in 63 and the Child Hassam <coughs> Purchase Award in 67, uh, 69, and 74. And uh, the list of exhibitions is, is fairly extensive, going down the bottom of the page. And... Uh, as we move in on it, and we, we don't expect everyone to read it, but as I turn the page, uh, it, it will continue on this side. So that when we say Philip Sherrod is not necessarily a household word, uh, he's not, he isn't, but he is around, and he had a recent show at the Allen Stone Gallery, and he is, if you'll take my word for it, uh, one of the great painters of our time, but uh, don't take my word for it. Make up your own mind. And uh, let's, let's take a look at, at Philip Sherrod in action here. Phil, the, uh, we can see this picture now. What, what, what are you trying to express in this uh, head? Well, that was, um, that was done in about 1973 or 4. And um, I was in a series of human heads or people. And um, I guess, it's, I guess it, I'm like a child in a way because I... I suddenly, at that time of my life, begin to, I've always seen this, but maybe I hadn't gotten technically to a part of where I had rendered it or wished to render it. But I, I got intrigued with the idea um, that every head I looked at uh, looked like my own, which even though that's true and not true, uh, that state of hallucination, but um, mm -hmm. it was human. It was a, it was a, a walking person of whom, of, of whom, whom? Whom, yeah, right. Oh, very good, yeah. Hume, Hume, philosophy. Well, you're a poet, uh, too, right? No, so, yeah, well, word sounds yeah, so. yeah, well, I, yeah. But uh, the fact that um, the human head, in all its variations, uh, came out and made a painting. I did about 48 heads at this time of my painting, uh, and this is one of them. Uh, we might say it. that it's extremely large in scale, say, what, four feet by four feet, it's perhaps? It's about 44 inches by 48. And very, very rich in color, which of course we can't see. Sherrod is one of the great colorists of our time and very, very rich and sensuous in the paint. Ah, here we have uh, Philip Sherrod, artist, out on the street. Well, where are you painting here, Phil? At 6th Avenue and about 25th Street. Um, the, the thing that painting out in the street has produced is produced two things within my development as a painter. One is an impasto-type style, which um, my problem has never been, except until lately, um, I've always tried to open myself up freely to the response of everything that goes on, the reverberations, the sound, and place the paint within a way of that experience or that totality. So you get a very fragmented and a very moving quality in the work. Um, it's um, just uh, Tony Spruce standing along 6th Avenue with a red truck, and, which isn't readable, I guess, too much in the black and white. So you're, you're trying to express uh, many emotional states in here as well as the visual quality of the scene. Is that, is that I, what you're I think the visual you? to the, the feeling side or, or the emotional um, and um, into possibly some sort of... I'm moving more into the mental now as, as an older painter. I'm trying to confine the form, the color, into uh, my own state of realization and what I want. What, what, what are people's reactions to your nudes and you know they're explicit the crotches are widespread and uh, you, you do a number of figures like this what what reactions do you get to these figures uh, I get a reaction of um, the viewers inability to accept this as a state of life uh, then again I get the extremist view which a uh, few other people are living like myself and they say yeah you bet yeah they, that's they, uh, that's a beautiful state yeah. of life and um, Oh, they're either pro or con. It's negative, it's extremist in that they like it or they don't. 
They think I'm obscene or vulgar, or they think I'm just a living person that is truthful. Do you uh, find people who are perhaps kind of repressed in their own sexuality getting a, either, either biting off their tongue and saying they hate it, they, it's totally obscene, or they find a, a second-hand personal freedom through your own All right, freedom yes, of yes, reaction? Yes, yeah, yeah, that's, that's it, yeah. In, in fact, I'm amused at the state of what I might call restriction by other people to face what they do. They want to close the closet, and behind closed doors we will... You know, the strange thing is that I can't imagine that being any different than anything else. Yeah, to me, it's just another, uh, just another state. Well, I think painters have a... Uh, I use this because I, I, I love that state. You know, I love the state of woman, and I love the state of receptivity. I love the state of freedom, which maybe I don't have, and I see it uh, in, in the women today. And the women see it in you too, right? I mean, I they, they don't respond. Know. <laughs> Come on, can I put you on the spot, big fella? Huh? Huh? <laughs> okay. Big fella, it's little fella. Little fella, okay. What, 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 uh, where are you here at this, what, what bar is this? That's the Treaty Stone, that's 7th Avenue, and uh, between 23rd and 24th, um, just a little bar that, um, that the guy is going to drink. It's usually, it's a stag bar, this particular one. Uh, a lot of lonely old timers out of the Chelsea or wherever. Of course, I mean, an artist sees in this, and again, we're seeing it in black and white, but it, it's really rich in color, but the artist sees not all, sees the beauty of the light coming out of the building and glowing on it, and the, just the, the, the beauty of the structure itself, and the life and dynamism in it, I guess, huh? Is yeah, yeah, like? well, yeah, you, you know that, Don. I mean, you're a painter yourself. Um, the light, the color, in this particular run, I was I was more trying to get the guttiness of what I felt was I won't say state of drunkenness, but I will say the state and act of drinking. Um, I don't necessarily like Rudyard Kipling, but I, I do like the state of life, whether it be go-go girls drinking a good beer or, or, you know, reading a good book. To me, it's all the same. I'm not that much of an intellectual. I, I try to get the light, the form, the feeling of that particular bar, and it's different from another bar that I do or two. And you change your response just because you're trying to react to reality and get some of the guts of it, as, as you say. Well, wait, wait. No, I'd rather not have that rather said. I, say no, that. no, I'd rather say that I am dominated to a degree by subject matter, and whether I paint one girl or another or one bar or another, it's the composition, the color that moves on the eye visually to me. I consider myself more of a free medium, and I absorb and try to place down that reality within extreme subtleties and differences rather than stylize or intellectualize and say, well, this is or has to do, or I have to do it this way because it just happens. No, I, I didn't say that yeah, at all. Okay, I, I okay. was saying that, that, that you responded to each thing as it came along. That's okay, what I okay, said. okay. Yeah, no, yeah, okay. I, I know that Except, you're far from okay. being stylized. You're very uh, open to immediate experience. Uh, can you explain uh, how this painting developed? Well, what do you call it, and how did it how did it come to? Well, it's titled Susan uh, Groundhog and Blue Jay. It's 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 out of my single religious figure works, which has to do with where I have I use a single figure and arrange a composition, or it, it really arranges itself. Um, I don't know how or why it happens, but it, this is uh, the last two years I've been working on a, a series of this sort of thing. Um, it has to do with just painting making a composition um, that is most meaningful for, for self-expression or about the world or a state of what I feel is going on. What, what um, is going on? Uh, life. Life in every sequence and fashion. Um, I would rather the viewer, rather than tell them, I'd rather the viewer to look at the painting and decide themselves. I, 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 if you don't mind, I'd like to push you a little bit on this, okay. Bill, would you? Okay. Uh, what, what, what is religious about this? You mentioned the word religion. What? Well, I, I think I think every every human mm -hmm. being, I think the state and caring, not within a vogue or the latest promoted things, but I think that I am most concerned about everyone to the same degree and state. Uh, I don't like calling them an object, which uh, some artists have in the past or use them as objects. I consider I'm one of them. And each person I paint, uh, I get, if they will sit for me, I, I get most involved with. I mean, I, I, I study every facet of them visually, and maybe uh, what I know goes into the paint. Uh, religious in that um, everyone truly matters, and if they don't matter, and if we don't get to that state of evolution where that people, 
numbers, we've got to get out of all this past and get into real human-oriented feelings and work it out per person, one-on-one, -on -one for a future life. Why do you uh, have uh, Why do you have the Crest toothpaste and the uh, <coughs> arm and hand? I, I don't know why. I don't know why. When I paint, uh, I walk around <laughs> and um, either a, a Crest is bought at the store or uh, I suddenly am caught looking at it. And the next thing I know is that I have it in my hand and I'm painting with it in the, in the painting. It's in I, I a studio, or you and walk out and get it, or what? Well, no, no. I, well, it's either that, it's you know, or it's bought on Saturday, or it's been laying around on the shelf, you know. Or but, but are you actually looking at it while you paint it, and it comes in, or is the whole thing sort of this dream thing that happens, this sort of fantasy kind of emotional expressionist? Well, that's thing, okay. Whatever okay. it is. And, uh, what I'm trying to get at is yeah. people are going to look at the painting and they're going to like it or they're not going to like it because of the composition or the expressiveness that you have in it. But what I'm trying to do is, is just see, well, why do you use this <clears throat> commercial symbolism? Are you commenting on this commercial society of ours when you use this? Are they aspects of the character of the people you're painting? You know, in a sense, is she a slave you know, to the world of Crest and Arm and Hammer baking I would soda say, I would Iron say, City beer? I would say to this? a degree, all of us are. Um, now, I don't make an intellectual or a concept, and I don't purposely use these objects to speak of them or, or her, but I will say that ultimately a painting in its own right is a statement. Uh, I possibly, I do paint, yes, I do paint off of the crest, I do paint off of the girl, off of the woodchuck, I, I make paintings or drawings or whatever, and I paint off of life only, uh, Times Square, every, every place. But I will say that ultimately the work might come off to others as being maybe a dream sequence or a, a kind of an amorphic type of development within just the sequence of life. I don't Paint. I paint it because I like the colors. I know. <laughs> I, I know you do. I know you do. I, and I, I know what but you're saying. But I will saying. say that the ultimate statement is what you're saying, too. Yeah, but, but I, I know what you're saying. I mean, I'm a painter myself, and, and we know each other's work, and we know each other. But uh, I think you, I think you, if I can speak of you, uh, I think you paint more from the mental intent to make a statement, and I think it just happens to me. Well, no, it'll just happen uh, to me, too. That's why I know. I mean, I may plan something a little more than you do, but yeah. I, I realize that when you do something, it just happens. But after the fact, it's you right. can you look it's at right. it and you say, yes, yes, it's yes right. this yes, is yes, true. And, right. I, and yeah. then you say, oh, look what I did, yeah. right. in yeah. a sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. OK, well, let's go to the next next picture here. <clears throat> can, we, can we get this, this shot here? And uh, I, I think. Um, I think this this one's slightly out of focus. It's, uh, some of these shots aren't too good, but um, well, we can get sort of the composition. Uh, sort this of the is idea a, a title, Elena of the Cut. It's uh, it's a very strong painting. The the predominantly colors are blue against a dark green background with this uh, red tomato or persimmon or uh, or um, whatever with slices of the tomato. Are you a uh I, I, I hate to ask this, and I, or what, 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 what are, are you, how much hate is in your picture, I, and I, in, in your paintings, in terms of how much aggressiveness, how much anger, I, let's don't use the word hate, let's no, use the no, word let's anger. get rid of the word hate. Yeah, okay. Let, let's use the word anger. How, how much, how much anger, how much fierceness is in your pictures? I, I, I feel that it, sometimes there's a lot of fierceness that gives them great strength. I'm not using it in a mm -hmm. negative mm -hmm. sense, mm -hmm. I think you realize that. Yeah. And I don't know if you feel we should talk about that aspect of it. Well, yeah, yeah. I, 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 uh, I would like to say that my paintings seemingly have um, people think they're under the state of aggression. And I know there are many types of states of aggression, but I'd like to say that ultimately I'm one of the most aggressive optimists, which at times uh, I'm very fiery in nature, quick and so forth, emotive. But I, I would like to say I hope there's no negative aggression, oh, um, no. No, and, and, I, and, I, and I would like to think that the work uh, or the force, the tour de force, is more a mystery than it is just a physical rendering. Uh, uh, the work assaults people, and they don't like it for that reason. They want poetical non-statements of nothing. And uh, that's about no, all. No, well, I mean, the, I no, I wasn't using it in a negative sense, but there's uh, such a poetic dreamy quality in uh, that picture of Elena, as in, in uh, many of yours. But uh, and also, too, I wish we could see some of your self-portraits. You, I think Phil has done some of the most remarkable self-portraits 
uh, of our time. You know, and he ranks with the great painters of self-portraits, whether you consider Rembrandt or Van Gogh or, or whoever who have done them. And uh, they are extremely vivid and full of life and vitality. He, he eats pickles. He holds can openers. He holds his paintbrush. He wears sucks, hats. Sucks tomatoes. Sucks tomatoes. Does all sorts of obscene things to, to all sorts of different things. Well, now, now, that's, uh, no, no, wait, wait. No, that, that's, that's the way it's thought of as obscene. This, this age, no, wait, okay. this age of promotion and mass media right. on obscenity Everything, and that's something else I'd like to say, every damn uh, review I get referring to my work talks about the obscenity of it. I think what the world has an inability to not be able to do or to really do is that they can't face the truth, they can't face what they do, and I think if you want to see the word obscene, I, I, like, I like that word incidentally, uh, obscene is really just the truth. Yeah. The, the bare, laid open fact, spread eagle, mm -hmm. as this is it. No, I, you, you'll get no arguments from me. I, I, I used that. it in jest. <laughs> and if I do, he'll, he'll slide into me with his spikes high into third base after the program here. No, I'm kidding. Big softball player, right, Phil? Yeah, I played for the, on the weekends. So yeah. weekend, so. How many home runs did you get last week? Uh, I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> he doesn't want to brag. He was telling me all the doubles and triples. What, 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 what's happening in this picture? This is titled right? Elena of the Rollons. Um, this is... Um, a composition of possibly, uh, and going beyond the state of the individual as Elena, as Betty, as Susan, as Don, as Phil, the state that all of us are particip participating in, in, in the disappointments of life, in the successes of life, whatever these things are. And this particular state represents, um, I think, uh, an almost introspective viewpoint itself, and I mean her looking at her. Uh, or me looking at her, or me looking at her through me, or me looking at self through her. And I think this is what we've got to get to as human beings to really go on. And, I, and that's something else. Mm -hmm. Painting in the past 50 or 60 years has re removed itself to such a, an empirical degree of jar, intellectual jargon yeah. that it no longer pertains to anyone other than the painter that did it. It becomes a therapeutic thing, and I would like to think that others could enjoy truly looking at a canvas and responding to it as a life, as a state of the world, and maybe within states of question, we could better uh, the world. Well, the painting, is, uh, the, the painting has such character in, ter in the handling of the body, the handling of the breasts, the belly button, the fold above the belly button, the arm, the hand, and of course the head. It's, it's truly observed with great strength and character. What, why is she Elena of the Rollons? What, what are there? De deodorants flowing around? <laughs> no, there? no. What, what my titles, it? my titles come, um, <clears throat> my titles come from the paintings. I never know what a painting is going to be, in, in, in its evolution of subject matter, the way the areas go together. The title's there for me, um, and it becomes whatever it is. Um, uh, I think we're all Elena of the Rollons. I think um, whether you take it to the rolling hills of the past or whether you take it to um, modern uh, macro fillet wrappers. I think that, um, I think this is our, uh, this is our fragmented uh, existence today. This is our state of living. Phil, we have three minutes and we could go on and on looking at a number of pictures, but I, I really feel that we ought to look at one of your recent pictures. And I really, I, in my 20 years of painting experience, I, I would call this a masterpiece. And, uh, uh, what, what, what are you expressing here in the Ode to Fertility? Uh, this, this represents um, a return of the woman's psyche into my own frame of existence, of which is not only baffling, but tolerable, um, totally acceptable, and inner, invigoratingly uh, possibly new with expectancies of a whole future to come within work, life, and uh, sequence of evolution. Uh, I'd rather not give too much literal explanation. Uh, I think it's a healthy painting. And I think in my work, it represents um, a statement, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 a worked out statement over the years it's happened, it's become. Well, obviously, uh, I'm sure people realize that it is a self-portrait and you have the uh, model <clears throat> sitting on your lap, you know, with the you're dressed in a beautiful, rich shirt. Her flesh tones, if we can see them in color, are just lustrous, uh, beautiful, warm yellows and yellow oranges and pinks, and very, very rich. Yet it's, it's flesh, yet it's marvelous color. And of course, 
the pet milk cans and these luscious, sumptuous oranges floating around the figures. It's, it's a remarkable, remarkable picture. Um, what, uh, what, what are you working on now? I understand that you're pretty excited about this. <coughs> well, here. all right, Don. I'm, I'm working on um, this direction, um, <coughs> um, one figure or two figures in, in, ingraded or ingratiated into a state of total composition of what I've been working on all of these years. Uh, I, I would like to ask you a question. Um, you know, I see your work like I see my work, and I see a few other painters today that I feel truly have a valid statement for the future. Um, I think um, Raphael Sawyer wrote uh, some sort of statement in reference to your work on a past show, and um, I'm looking at, uh, at this piece right here, which, uh, <laughs> can I get it in the camera, in this camera here, uh, which is one of your own works. Uh, you seem to uh, be more mentally aware of space than I. I'd like to ask you, and I've been curious about your own work in, in all of this time, I'd like to ask you, do you arrange your subject matter to a premeditated space for a statement uh, versus my kind of free ambling happening and uh, uh, I think I maybe I think I think maybe I don't want to take away from your time, and I'll keep it very brief. I th I think that I'm. We have one minute. I think that I'm maybe thinking about more what I'm doing now than I have in the past. But I, I think essentially, I think a little bit more about it than you do. I think, but I try to arrange things and just just let them happen. I used to do still lives and things where I things would I just throw things on a table and take them as they as, as they, they lay there. Yeah, like, yeah, but like, don't think like rolling happen. dice. Oh, wait. Don't things happen within the sequence of painting and composition? In other words, uh, I have a tendency to move things not knowing it for the sake of the painting, ultimately. Uh, I think any artist who knows his business and who's really trying to paint a picture moves things and changes things and so forth. Uh, you know, but I want to ask you one question. We have about 30 seconds left. All right. Okay? So that we, we don't have that much time. But I'm wondering if the realists who are coming up at this time after a t period of intellectual abstraction. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they could be considered the new avant-garde in art. These people are the yeah, real I, underdog. Right. I, I think a whole direction is coming, a whole revolution, a whole renaissance of people of whom refuse the past and are attempting to look, to see, to actually paint, and I think working long enough uh, there will be a totality of a whole revolutionary thing. I mean, you're one of them, I'm one of them. Uh, we actually are, damn it, painters trying to make a statement and revitalize art outside of its intellectual concepts and abstraction in the past and all of that. Thank you, Phil. We've been talking to uh, one tremendous painter, Philip Sherrod. Uh, you can probably see some of his works at the Allen Stone Gallery. He recently had a show there. And uh, he has a studio in New York on uh, 23rd Street. I guess he won't mind if I mention it. One of the truly outstanding painters of our time, and he has been our guest on Artist and Critic. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Don.